Well, this lesson we're going to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, which matches up with Chapter 6.3 in our textbook. And we're going to first discuss the definition of what a parallelogram is, and then we're going to discuss all those theorems listed below. So first thing, let's see. Whoops, I went backwards. There we go. Definition of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a four-sided, um, we're going to deal with a quadrilateral, which is a four-sided closed figure. And then what's special about a parallelogram is, is that the opposite sides are parallel. That symbol there and that symbol in our notation indicates parallelism. So AD is parallel to BC, right there. And AB, double marks, matches up with these double marks here, parallel marks. AB is parallel to CD. AB is parallel to CD. And once you have that established, then we can say that this parallelogram symbol and followed by each vertice, A, B, C, D. Then, you know, the opposite sides are parallel. It's a parallelogram. Let's keep going. So now we have some theorems. So if you, theorem 6, 8 states that if the opposite, opposite sides are congruent to each other for a quadrilateral, then it's a parallelogram. Let's very quickly discuss a proof, because that's not the focus of this lesson. If we draw a segment AC and say that it's congruent to itself, then you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA by side 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 postulate. And then once you say these two triangles are congruent, then you can use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent to conclude that this angle here and this angle here are congruent to each other and also this angle here and this angle here are congruent to each other. Well, those are alternate interior angles, which would allow you then, looking at these single marked, uh, red marked angles, that makes the letter Z. Those are alternate interior angles, which would then allow you to conclude that AD is parallel to BC. And these double marked angles here would allow you to conclude that CD is, con is parallel to um, AB. And you know, that would meet the definition of a parallelogram. So we're cutting that short by just simply using this theorem that if the opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. Next theorem. Um, if consecutive angles or consecutive interior angles are uh, supplementary, then it's a parallelogram. If these two angles, they're consecutive, um, then if they are supplementary, then that would mean that this line AB would be parallel to CD, and likewise, the next pair of consecutive angles here, if they were supplementary, then that would then allow you to say that AD is parallel to BC, and that would clearly mean that the opposite sides are parallel, so it would be a parallelogram. So we're going to cut that short by just saying by theorem 6, 9, if, if, um, the con if consecutive angles in a quadrilateral, if each pair of consecutive angles are supplementary, then it's a parallelogram. Theorem 610 is very similar. This is saying that if the opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. S well, starting with a quadrilateral, obviously. But um, let's put some letters there to try to make some sense out of it real fast. If this is x and this is x, and this is y and this is y, Clearly, x and x and y and y add up to 360 degrees, because that's the sum of the interior angles of a, of a quadrilateral. Well, that would mean that you'd have 2x plus 2y is equal to 360 divided by 2, everything. You get x plus y equals 180 degrees. Well, that meets what we just described for theorem 6, 9. So, parallelogram. So, well, we're done. Let's keep going. This is theorem 611, which allows us, um, which states that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, so that this segment here is congruent to that segment, this segment here is congruent to that segment, if that takes place, then it's a parallelogram. And theorem 6 12, that one's something new to us. If you have a pair, if you have a quadrilateral, 
and you have a pair of opposite sides and they are both congruent to each other and parallel to each other, then this figure is a parallelogram. And likewise here in this image. If this side is congruent to that side and that same pair of sides are parallel to each other, it's a parallelogram. Let's apply all this. So on a theorem 6.8 states that um, if the opposite sides are congruent to each other, then it's a parallelogram. Well, clearly 15 and 15, those, that pair of opposite sides are congruent to each other. The next question is, is how, what value of x has to, you know, what would be the value of x to make these two opposite sides congruent to each other? So you set 3x plus 2 equal to 14, subtract the 2 from each side, and divide by 3. So x has to be 4 for this to be a parallelogram. Next one. Um, this is all pairs of consecutive angles in a quadrilateral or supple supplementary, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So these two angles clearly add up to 180. The question is, is what does x have to be for these two to add up to 180? So 23x minus 3 plus the 68 is equal to 180 degrees. And that's the setup. And then combining the like terms and subtracting um, in effect the, the, the 65 from both sides, you're going to get uh, 23x is equal to 115 divided by 23. x has to be 5 for this to work. Okay. And theorem 610 says both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Um, then this would be a um, parallelogram. Well, that would mean that this would have to be 59 degrees, and this would have to be 59 degrees. There's your pair of opposite angles that have to be congruent, and likewise, and these two have to be congruent to each other. So the setup is going to be that you know 17x plus 2 is equal to 121. Subtract the 2 from each side, divide by 17, we get x is 7 that'll work. And then, well, if the diagonals bisect each other and it's a quadrilateral, then it's a parallelogram. So that means 2x plus, uh, 2x is equal to 8, so x has got to be 4, and then simply y has to be 7. And this last one, uh, applying theorem 612, what we have to do is we have to find a pair of sides, uh, opposite sides, that are both congruent to each other and parallel to each other. So are we finding the value of y or are we finding the value of x? For this to work, we have to find the value of x. This needs to be congruent to this for it to be a parallelogram. So it's got to be 2x minus 7 is equal to 11. So you're going to get 2x is equal to 18. So x must be 9. And we don't really care at this moment what, what y is going to be equal to. And I think that's it. Yeah, thank you for watching this video.